What's going on guys? It's Danny from Fantasy Stock Exchange here and today I'll be writing solo talking about and ranking my favorite second year backs in all of fantasy football going over the main five sophomore running backs, rest in peace Cam Akers, and ranking them, providing rationale as to why I see them how I currently have them. For those unfamiliar with those five backs I'll be referencing, the topic of this video centers around Indianapolis Colts running back Jonathan Taylor, Detroit Lions running back DeAndre Swift, Washington football team running back Antonio Gibson, Baltimore Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins, and Kansas City Chiefs running back Clyde edwards Lair. For this video, we'll be referencing them by my personal rank of them and how they currently rank up via underdog fantasy ADP, basically evaluating my differentiation on them from consensus. And again, if you're watching this video, make sure to sign up on the platform using code FSE to get free access to both of our draft guides and a $25 deposit bonus when you sign up. If you guys enjoy content like this and are interested in more, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and turn notifications on to never miss a beat on an FSC upload. We're currently on the road to 5,000 subscribers and your support means everything. So before we get into the video, as always, we're going to hit that damn intro on y'all. Okay, before we get into the sophomore running back, we have a special announcement for you guys out there. This video is currently brought to you by Pristine Auction, the premier place to show up your man cave with official signed sports memorabilia. Pristine Auction allows you an extremely affordable outlet to soup up your setup with JSA witness signatures, providing you with a truly personal touch with your favorite professional athletes. The kind people over at Pristine Auction are giving you avid FSC supporters a chance to earn some free memorabilia by just signing up. If you sign up now using code FSC, you get a $10 off on registration. And by commenting FSC on this video, you'll be entered in for a chance to win one of three signed jerseys, as you guys can see on the screen. Enjoy hearing about DeAndre Swift in this video? Well, don't skip a chance to win his signed jersey. Again, huge thanks to the people over at Pristine Auction for allowing us to finally reward our loyal subscribers with some free merchandise in the process. So anyways, thank you out there. Um, now let's get into the video. And to kick off this video, let's talk about the dichotomy between these five backs and how their 2020 performances compare before we get into their 2021 forecast, doing so in order of their 2020 draft selection. So starting off, as you guys know, if you're watching the draft last year, and quite frankly, if you paid attention to football, we go to the only first round pick of this group, Clyde edwards Lair of the Kansas City Chiefs. With Clyde edwards Lair, he had high expectations leading up to the 2021 fantasy football season. Again, he represented a uh, pass-catching running back that was a staple of a dominant 2019 undefeated LSU Tiger team and was expected to answer that fantasy football elite given his skill set, the situation available on the Chiefs, and a gold line of scoring opportunity and receiving efficiency. Again, we saw the two previous years prior in 2017 and 2018 with Kareem Hunt, 2017's RB4 on points per game and 2018's RB6, that a capable running back in this system can flourish with Andy Reid and the Chiefs. And this resultantly skyrocketed Clyde's ADP to sixth overall entering that 2020 season. And as you know, he ended up finishing as a back end RB2, finishing as the RB22 and half PPR points per game. But for where you drafted him, obviously you were extremely disappointed. So, unfortunate rookie campaign for where you selected Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Not too many people ended up winning their leagues with that selection. Shout out Bush because he ended up overcoming it. But We'll see what happens going into 2021, as I'll mention later in the video. So next up, and personally, one of my pet cats entering the draft. I mean, this was a guy up until the combine was my RB1, my favorite on film from Georgia, and that's going to be DeAndre Swift. With an ADP of the 603 off the board last year, he was seemingly walking into a muddy situation, yet thrived once given the opportunity. He ended up finishing as last year's RB18 and half PPR points per game after being the 35th overall selection by the Lions. And if you watched DeAndre Swift at all in the 2020 campaign, he flashed big play and receiving potential in the process. As we'll get into, as good as Swift was in 2020, I believe he may be on route to destroy those totals in 2021. So you guys can see the splits. I mean, in games that he had 10 or more rushing attempts, he was legitimately a top league winning caliber running back, 19.42 half PPR points per game. So... As we'll go ahead and get into, we'll see if he can keep that up going into 2021. But 
Next up, in terms of order of getting drafted, 41st overall selection was used by the Indianapolis Colts on running back Jonathan Taylor from the Wisconsin Badgers. And he was Dynasty's twi uh, Dynasty Twitter's gold mine from the get-go. I mean, this is validly so when you're looking at his athletic comparables. His most similar backs via this chart, you got Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, Adrian Peterson, Matt Forte, Ryan Matthews, Leonard Fournette, Kevin Smith, Trent Richardson, Nick Chubb, and Marshawn Lynch. All were, and it, like most of them, ended up being elite fantasy football running backs. And we saw as a rookie, Jonathan Taylor has every right to be in that group because as the best running college running back of the last 10 years, maybe a case to be all time. If you look at a projection standpoint, he started slow, but we saw that true Jonathan Taylor talent come out at the end of the season. This was a guy that in the last five games of the year, uh, weeks 11 to week 17, he averaged over 25 half PPR points per game. Again, this is an elite athlete at the position and out of this whole sophomore running back class, he has the best chance, similar to a Saquon Barkley, of breaking out these huge 70, 80 yard runs. I mean, I truly believe Jonathan Taylor is a difference making home run threat and we can see if he can replicate his 2020 success for the whole 2021 season. So next up, we got Baltimore Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins, who they made the 55th overall selection in the 2020 draft. And this seemed like a perfect marriage, in my opinion, when it initially happened. You're pairing arguably the best RPO runner in the entire class from Ohio State with a team that runs a good amount of RPO with success, obviously with Lamar Jackson spearheading that offense. His ADP was shot low because, again, the veteran presence, everybody looks at situation when they're drafted. The veteran presences of Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill made people a little pessimistic about his potential in 2020. But we saw at 6'10 overall ADP, if you were able to acquire J.K. Dobbins for the back half of the year, he was an absolute game-changing running back down that stretch. His 16.7 half PPR points per game in that stretch would be the RB6 on points per game over the year. So you see his final six games, again, week 11 to 17, seems to be the, the honey spot of these running backs. 16.7 half PPR points per game on extreme efficiency. But you guys know about J.K. Dobbins, and we'll talk about him a little bit more in a second. But the final back to introduce, and the lowest draft of the, these backs, is going to be Antonio Gibson, who was made the 66th overall selection from the Washington football team. And it's wild when you consider that this was a raw wide receiver in college, but they took a chance on a super raw athletic freak from Memphis, and it paid dividends in 2020. I mean, this is a guy that throughout the year you saw natural progression as a running back, and he's coming off a respectable 2020 campaign where he was the RB15 on points per game in half PPR and finished as the RB12 overall in half PPR. So the sky's the limit for this guy, and as he finds himself – progressing into that pure running back we can see this guy really take off and if you're a fan of the channel you know my thoughts on him as well get into but we've recapped their 2020 campaigns and what they did as rookies but how do they project looking forward into 2021 well i'll start off with the highest selected of the bunch and the highest selected in 2020 because my rb5 amongst this group is going to be none other than kansas city chiefs running back clyde edwards alaire so my current rank on him is he is my RB16, but Underdog Fantasy, as you guys know if you're on the platform, has him ranked as the RB14, 24th overall on ADP. And if you followed the channel last year, you'll know my affinity I had for Clyde Everett Hilaire entering that 2020 season. I bought into the process. I bought into the fact that, as I mentioned, Kareem Hunt was an elite fantasy football running back when he was playing for the Chiefs. I thought that the pass catching prowess, the offensive scoring opportunity, all of that would be able to potentially buoy Clyde Edwards Hilaire into an elite fantasy football running back. And as we saw, it just truly disappointed on premise and he didn't live up to those expectations. Now, you're gonna have Clyde Truthers all off season. The main thing that they're gonna say, they had Le'Veon Bell, now he's gone. How does that affect Clyde Edwards Hilaire? He's got the backfield to himself. Or there'll be people, well, he had a, a, over a 1,000 yards from scrimmage and five touchdowns. Was he really that much of a disappointment as a rookie? And are, is he going to be utilized as that bell cow coming off that year? Well, personally, watching him last year, why are we so sure he's going to be this bell cow running back? Why are we so sure that 
Jarek McKinnon, Daryl Williams are not going to be put into the fray for this team. Are we sure he can really take that leap? Because given his efficiencies in 2021, despite playing in that top offense, because we're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill, an elite offense that will scare any team out of the running game, he didn't show on that promise that he was taken with at 32nd overall to be. I mean, we're seeing a guy out of 58 qualified running backs. You guys can see the ranks on the screen, but yard per route run, 1.04. Yards after catch per reception, 8.4. Tackles avoided per touch, 22.12, which was good, but that's the only real elite stat out of this bunch. Again, break rate one percentage was low. Yards after contact per attempt was low. Pass blocking grade, as we know, CEH is not a pass blocker, which you kind of need to be on that offense to get significant playing time. 54th out of 58 backs. And you guys can see the rest. Yards after catch per reception, tackles avoided per touch, etc. He is, um, I think he's a fine back. Like he's, an, he's probably an average back, but when you're talking about the elite talent in this running back class, I just can't fathomly put a lesser talented player, in my opinion, with Clyde Edwards Hilaire over some of the backs that we're going to mention in this video. And a lot of people are going to watch and say, I get that, Danny. He may not be as talented as the other backs, but in terms of situation, the Chiefs are going to score a boatload of touchdowns. So he should see some positive regression from the five he scored in 2020, right? Are we sure he gets the majority of the goal line work? Because as you guys can see on the screen, Corey tweeted this out a, a good amount or not too long ago, but Clyde Edwards Hilaire had 29 red zone carries last year with nine coming inside the five yard line. 11 of those and six inside the five came in week one. It is remarkable to see that he got six of his nine total inside the five carries on the season in the first week. The Chiefs saw that he was not able to punch the ball into the end zone and made adjustments accordingly. So I don't think he's going to be the main goal line back of the Chiefs. Could he sparingly tap into that work? Absolutely. I don't think he's going to be a castaway and not get any work. But the people that are toting this guy as having elite touchdown upside, that's simply not going to be his role, in my opinion. So although I know I've been completely bashing him so far, again, he's still my RB16. I still have some, some hope for him that he could be a solid RB2. But I think that's what you're drafting him as. I think you're drafting him as a decently safe RB2 option. But he's currently being drafted on that false premise that he has this elite upside. Okay, clearly I'm behind market. I currently have him as more of a late three, early four type of back in value while the market has him as a two, three turn back, according to Underdog Fantasy. But I'm fine. Like, if he falls to me at that spot, so be it. But there are just better values in the third round to the point where I'm not going to be taking Clyde edwards Hilaire in the majority of my drafts in 2021. So enough on Clyde edwards Hilaire. It pains me to say that given how high I was in 2020, but you have to make adjustments, man. This is fantasy football. He didn't produce the product on the screen or on the field, and I have to adjust accordingly. So we can move on to the next back of the video and my number four back of the sophomores, and that's going to be my RB15 overall, Underdogs Fantasy's RB16, 32nd overall, and that's going to be J.K. Dobbins of the Baltimore Ravens. And we move to J.K. Dobbins, and as, I, as I'll get into at current ADP, I honestly believe that Dobbins and the Lair should be flipped on the market with J.K. Dobbins being that early third rounder and Clyde Edwards Lair going on the 3-4 uh, turn. But as we see, that is currently not the case on Underdog Fantasy. And when you're talking about Dobbins, we are looking at, the, by far, in my opinion, the most efficient overall back in this class and arguably one of the most efficient backs in the entire NFL. And I mentioned his splits down the stretch. Absolutely phenomenal. 16.7 half PPR points per game. But you guys can see the splits on the screen of his efficiency. Absolutely remarkable. Number one, two yards per carry. Number three, yards per touch. Number four, breakaway runs. Number one, breakaway one rate. Number five, juke rate. I mean, this is a guy, number three, yards created per touch. This is a guy that was just an elite efficiency running back. And we've seen in the past that if you were an elite efficient running back as a rookie, you can get that sizable jump as a sophomore. And Bush went over this in a recent article talking about Dobbins. But Dobbins joins elite company. When you're talking about six yards per touch as a rookie, the only two recently that have done that have been Alvin Kamara and David Johnson. And again, of course, both of those two experienced such a tremendous volume jump in their second run, uh, year, where David Johnson in the second year was legitimately the RB2 overall. And as we know with Alvin Kamara, 
People wanted to cite regression. People wanted to cite regression. Well, guess what? Alvin Kamara built off that rookie year and ended up being even more of the fantasy football staple that we see of him today. So if this if this data is true, if J.K. Dobbins ends up getting that volume uptick that we look for with the talent that he possesses, we could be talking about a guy with a legitimate top five overall ceiling, as we saw from those other guys. And this elite company, we'll see if Dobbins can receive that uptick in his receiving output compared to those guys because obviously we know David Johnson, Alvin Kamara, two of the best receiving backs of our generation. But we'll look into the 2020 splits of the Ravens and it became apparent that their offense was starting to get stale. Their offense was starting to get predictable and it seems like they would really like to change that. So you guys can see, but they had the highest right run rate in neutral game script in the NFL last year at 55% and were the fourth highest in red zone run rate at 59%. How does that change? Well, as I mentioned in uh, my video with Rashad Bateman, rookie wide receiver in the first round, this team has already voiced they want to add balance to their offense. So you guys can see that on the screen, but Ravens offense coordinator Greg Roman said he wants a more downfield passing attack, which from a rushing perspective on an efficiency back like J.K. Dobbins, listen, we don't expect them to get a ton of carries to begin with. So if they're going to introduce more downfield passing, that only bodes well for the efficiency of a guy in Dobbins. And as we saw, the main thing we have here, we know he's going to be efficient on the ground. The problem is 18 targets last year. That's not going to suffice if he wants to enter that elite territory. Well, according to the Athletics' Jeff Zubek, who is a respected beat reporter for the Ravens, it seems evident that the coaches want to involve their backs, and particularly Dobbins, more in the passing game. So you guys can see that on the screen, but... Ravens coaches believe J.K. Dobbins is capable of more and would like to get him more involved in the passing game. Ravens coach John Harbaugh said involving running backs in the passing game has been one of the main points of emphasis in the offseason and also cites that they've seen a good amount of uptick in terms of J.K. Dobbins putting in that work this offseason to become that adept pass catcher out of the backfield. If he adds this arsenal to his already elite rushing production, the sky is the absolute limit, and I could look foolish having this guy as my RB15 right now. He legitimately could enter that early first-round territory that we've seen from elite players. I mean, think about Aaron Jones. I think that's the type of potential we could see with J.K. Dobbins if he gets that uptick. Again, am I projecting him to have 60 targets? No. Is it in the realm of possibility he has 40, 45-plus with a more high-volume Ravens passing attack? Absolutely so. I'm very optimistic about J.K. Dobbs. Again, I might look foolish for having at 15, but I truly believe the talent will win out in this situation. It seems like a slight that I have him at four amongst my sophomore running backs because I just made such a case for him. But once we get into the next three, you guys will soon see this is an elite sophomore running back class. And I urge you guys, if you can somehow get your hands on them in Dynasty, do so because I believe at least the top four, potentially CEH, are all in store for huge 2021 campaigns that may make their value unobtainable entering next offseason. So let's get into the next back. And this is a back that was my film love. When I first started scouting that 2020 running back class, I said, listen, this back from Georgia is special. DeAndre Swift is an absolute special back. He ended up entering uh, the 2021 dra or the 2020 draft as my RB2 overall after the combine. But from a film grade perspective, was my RB1 throughout. And with DeAndre Swift, listen, I understand he is in the worst situation amongst these five backs. But the main difference that separates him from the others is his expected receiving output. And that's what gets him to be my RB13 overall comparatively to underdog fantasy, where they have him as RB15 and 31 overall. So a late third round pick on a guy I believe has a legitimate top eight overall ceiling, as we'll get into. Absolute smash in the third round. It makes it so that I'm more comfortable starting with wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end wide receiver in the first two rounds when I can get these elite wide receiver or elite receiving backs in the third round like DeAndre Swift, but we'll get into it. Why, uh, while he had 57 targets, talking about DeAndre Swift, he had 57 targets as a rookie. The adjustments in this coaching staff going to Anthony Lynn and Dan Campbell calling the offense should heavily influence a boost in his receiving usage. And you guys can see it on the tweet uh, on the screen. It was tweeted by Nathan Janke of PFF. But the most explosive catches in the last three seasons by a running back, tied at first, you got Alvin Kamara and Austin Eckler. What do those two backs have in common? DeAndre Swift's coaches came from both of their offenses. Anthony Lynn obviously coming from the Chargers. Dan Campbell obviously coming from the Saints. 
What does that bode for DeAndre Swift? Well, he may not be, as those guys are, a top three receiving back in the league, but he is more than adept in the passing game. And you guys can see that on the screen. Number 10 in target share, number 11 in yards per reception, number six in yards per route run, and number 11 in catch rate. This is an elite receiving back talent. And if he's put into those situations to add targets to his game, and as we'll get into, the fact that the Lions lost their top two wide receivers this offseason – only bodes well for the opportunity. We could be talking about a guy who has a hundred targets. And if that's the case, it's hard not to absolutely smash this RB 13 overall placement that I currently have him at. So when you're talking about the elites of the elites, not only was he an elite in terms of receiving production and receiving efficiency, but he was also one of the most efficient goal line runners in the entire NFL in 2020. Again, despite only having 20 rushing attempts from inside the 20, DeAndre Swift produced eight rushing touchdowns. And on only nine carries from inside the five-yard line, he scored on six. I mentioned how inept uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was on the goal line. DeAndre Swift did the exact opposite, which only bows the question, man, Kansas City, what if you just actually took the good running back in the first round and went from there? But he reminds me of Aaron Jones. I mean, we saw early career Aaron Jones thrive off of efficiency, thrive off of receiving production, thrive off of elite uh, rushing production in terms of the uh, touchdown department. I do think DeAndre Swift can enter that territory as that elite back that doesn't require 300 uh, touches. And he probably won't ever be a 350 touch back like a Joe Mixon maybe, but I would much rather DeAndre Swift in the long haul over a Joe Mixon because I do think that the talent will win out here and the receiving production will win out. So overall, I expect Swift to enter that superstar territory this year. I mean, especially in PPR formats, we're talking about a guy that could very well have a 70 catch, 750 yard, like six touchdown receiving production this year. I genuinely believe that is in the cards for DeAndre Swift, given the situation at hand. And if you're punting running back, again, I mentioned wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, wide receiver in the first two rounds. This is the perfect upside shot to take in the third round, in my opinion. And at his current 31 overall ADP, I'm absolutely going to be abusing that. So. Anyways, off of DeAndre Swift, just went off on him how much I love him. Let's talk about Jonathan Taylor running back from the Indianapolis Colts. My RB10 overall, underdog fantasy's RB9 and 14th overall pick. And obviously, my ranking of Jonathan Taylor has been heavily influenced with the recent news of quarterback Carson Wentz and offensive guard Quentin Nelson being expected to miss the first five to, or the next five to 12 weeks, which inadvertently will knock down JT from my RB7 down to my RB10. But I still believe, given his play style, he's the perfect upside shot to take in that mid-round two that we look for every single year. And given his efficiency of production as a runner, it's easy to see why I'm optimistic about Taylor. I mean, this is a guy who was phenomenal in 2020, or yeah, 2020, at the back half of the year. Talking about a guy, 13th in two yards per carry, 14th in yards per touch, second in breakaway runs, Ninth in breakaway run rate, tenth in evaded tackles. I mean, this is a guy that was legitimately winning leagues down the stretch. As I mentioned, twenty-five half PPR points per game, absolutely phenomenal. And as shown earlier, if you had Jonathan Taylor in that week eleven on, you probably win your leagues. What do I see Jonathan Taylor being in twenty twenty one? I personally view Jonathan Taylor as being Nick Chubb with forty plus target uh, potential. And if Nick Chubb was getting forty plus targets, he would be in that line of RB3, RB5 type of potential. I truly believe Jonathan Taylor enters that this season. And we saw it. He produced on the stretch and gained the trust of the Colts coaching staff. And you guys can see on the screen, but Coach Frank Reich acknowledged the run game will go through Jonathan Taylor, who has earned the right to be the main guy, his own words, in that Colts backfield. With Taylor, you'll be betting on elite and young ascending talent. And when I'm looking in the second round, I'm comparing like Jonathan Taylor and I don't know, Joe Mixon. It's really not a comparison for me. Give me the upside. I want a running back that has legitimate potential to win my league. And I truly believe that if Jonathan Taylor hits his ceiling, he has league winning potential. Top five, top three back overall upside. That is what I swing for in the early portion of my drafts. Jonathan Taylor possesses all of the qualities to be able to enter that. Even with those injuries, I get it. I wanted to have him higher. He was my RB7 overall. He was a first-round pick for me. But if you can capitalize and get a value dip on him now that he's going in that second round, by all means, because I do think Wentz and Quentin Nelson may miss a few games in the season. But once they are back, 
on a points per game expected output that we should see from Jonathan Taylor, we could be talking about one of the elites of fantasy football down that stretch. So anyways, this is the build up. This is what you all have been waiting for. This is what you guys have watched 25 minutes in this video to see. Number one on my list of sophomore running backs. And if you're a fan of the channel, you already know who this guy is. You already know because I can't stop talking about him. That's going to be Antonio Gibson of the Washington football team. My RB8 overall, where he's currently going on underdog fantasy as the RB11 and 17th overall pick. And this is all I got to say to start it off. DCMC is ready to take over fantasy football. When we are talking about situation and potential upside of a back, it's hard not to recognize that the Washington football team has a familiar face at offensive coordinator and head coach when it comes to running backs breaking out in their second season when you're talking about Antonio Gibson. Do you remember the last time this coaching staff had a talented running back who wasn't used as a full down workhorse the year before back in 2017? You know, the guy that would do, who would go on to legitimately break fantasy football records the following two years. Ron Rivera and Scott Turner, son of uh, North Turner, have their next CMC. And CMC had his question marks following his rookie season. Did his coaching staff believe he was in store for a workhorse-like role? Was he going to uh, evolve and capture it? This was a back that, as a rookie, garnered a similar touch baseline to what we saw of Gibson in 2020. 230 opportunities in 2017 and 14.4 per game for CMC compared to Gibson's 214 and 14 games or 15.3 opportunities per game. For a guy with no experience, no experience as a full-time running back before this year, again, we're talking about a third-round transition wide receiver this offseason in a shortened COVID offseason to garner 214 opportunities and nearly 1,100 yards from scrimmage in 14 games, despite not even being a presence on third down for the majority of the year, is absolutely mind-boggling. And when I'm mentioning third down, listen, weeks 1 to 10, Gibson had one, one total snap on third down and did not run a single route on third down the whole season. Eight total touches on third down throughout the season. That is going to change this year. Again, this is a raw running back who evolved into an offense, got a lead opportunity. Listen, he had to fix up as a, pa uh, as a pass blocker. That was the main bugaboo about Antonio Gibson. And all signs have shown this training camp thus far that Antonio Gibson has made that stride into becoming this team's workhorse running back. He was an RB1 on points per game. I mean, we're talking about RB2. Oh, sorry, not points per game, but RB1 overall. He was the RB12 and RB15 on points per game. Despite being basically a non-factor on third down, the same people touting that Gibson will not be able to earn a three-down role in the NFL, given those struggles in pass protection, must have been the same people that never thought Christian McCaffrey would break fantasy football as the top workhorse, 97% snap share type of back in the next two years. So I am absolutely all in Antonio Gibson. You guys can see the... the the reports are absolutely glowing out of camp. Washington running backs coach Randy Gregory said that Antonio Gibson's improvement from year two from year one is like night and day. And you can tell he's matured and got a better feel and understanding of the running back position. And Washington football team head coach Ron Rivera himself has said he expects a big jump from Antonio Gibson in 2021. And there are going to be people that say, well, what's going to happen here? How does he get a big produ uh, production bump? What do we expect this offense to look like? Well, for starters, they added to the offensive line, Sam Cosby in the draft. They added their, their starting quarterback this year, Ryan Fitzpatrick, a big upgrade from what they were dealing with last year. Haskins, Alex Smith, Cal Allen, Taylor Haneke. Yeah. Also, the fact that's going to change about this offense is that the expect or the the 220 combined McKissick and Logan Thomas targets from last year should diminish dramatically. Again, this was reported from J.P. Uh, Finley, a respected Washington beat reporter himself. But you guys can see it on the screen. J.D. McKissick had 110 targets last season. That number will fall probably about 20% per, uh, percent and perhaps more. And as we know, Alex Smith and Dwayne Haskins were reliant on feeding McKissick and Logan Thomas, while Fitzpatrick will be able to take more chances down the field. And when you're looking at Logan Thomas, it's the same exact thing. The number will go down if no more reason than more weapons in this team. The main thing really keeping people away, in my opinion, from Gibson ascension into superstar territory in 2021 would be that turf toe injury. Again, if you guys have paid attention to Antonio Gibson, that turf toe has been really bugging him over the past year. But 
According to Gibson himself, that seems like a thing of the past. Antonio Gibson said the place he felt the linger effect of his turf toe the most was when he made cuts. And now that isn't even an issue. And he's continuing to work on his fundamentals as a runner towards becoming a more polished product. And this is my current 12th overall player. He's currently 17th overall by ADP. If you can get a five pick discount at the top of your draft, by all means, this is a guy that if I am picking on that back end of the first early second round territory, I am not leaving a single draft without. He is the perfect, the perfect upside round two swing to take. And similar to what CMC presented in ba back in 2018, people were quick to criticize his limitations towards a workhorse status. If you guys remember, CMC before that breakout year was a late second round pick. People did not buy into him being in that workhorse and he absolutely proved people to be utterly useless in their projections. So I think Antonio Gibson is ready to do the same. And again, I've already made bold predictions in the past. I will not be shocked if we're looking at a consensus top three overall running back entering next year if Antonio Gibson hits his ceiling. I think he can absolutely break uh, fantasy football in 2021. So anyways, got a little passionate there. Got a little sweaty, got a little heated because I enjoy and I love what I do. And if you guys love the content, if you guys love this video, love talking sophomore running backs, it is such an exciting topic to talk about. Make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Us here over at FSE are ready to break fantasy YouTube as Antonio Gibson is ready to break fantasy football. So comment down below. Antonio Gibson is the next CMC if you made it this far as well. Love you guys. See you always. Tomorrow, fantasy rankings video. We're going to start off with the quarterback position. Do not miss that video. So... Peace out, y'all.